Okay, we're on page 33. Um, we started on this on Thursday. We didn't finish on Friday. Okay, so remember we talked about a relation and a function. This is something we covered in eighth grade. Um, whether you had me or not, you should have discussed this in eighth grade. Um, remember, a relation is just a relationship between two numbers. We talked about X values and Y values, right? Does everybody remember that? Yes? Okay. And remember, this was not a function because this X value, 8, and this X value, 8, had two different Y values. Everybody okay with that? Okay. If this 8 and this 8 had both negative 4, that would have been okay. Everybody good there? And if this 4 and this 4 had both been negative 2, that would have been okay. But because the X had two different Y values, that's what keeps it from being a function. Is everybody okay? Plus, if we put those points on the graph, it would have then failed this vertical line test that we talked about, right? Is everybody okay with that? Okay? Because once you graph it, you'll see that it fails the vertical line test. If we get over here and we look at this table, all these X values have unique Y values. So if they were to give you the same X value and we look at its Y values, if they give you the same point, the same X and Y together, that's okay. But you can't have an X and, a, and two different Y values paired. Is everybody okay with that? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of a recap. Josh, that's what you missed on Thursday, okay? On Friday, y'all wrote definitions, so you didn't really miss anything on Friday, Josh, because we did, I didn't want to move forward without you. So your X value cannot appear with more than one different Y value. Everybody's good, right? Mm -hmm. Then if we look at a graph, you can tell if it's a function by looking at that vertical line test. This one was a function. We look up and down. Vertical, remember? Vertical, this is vertical. This is horizontal. We look here. This passed the vertical line test. This one failed the vertical line test because these two points made it fail. This one passed the vertical line test. This one failed the vertical line test. Everybody's okay with that? And I told you you could write VLT on your paper. As long as if I asked you in three weeks, you could tell me what VLT stood for, right? Okay. So everybody's good there, yes? Okay, so now we're gonna talk about domain and range, okay? And this is really, really important because domain and range is gonna appear on your end of course exam multiple times, okay? It's gonna show up a lot and I need you to have a really solid understanding of domain and range. We talked about it a little bit in eighth grade but it is so, so important. It is readiness in the ninth grade, so it's going to show up on your test, okay? And we're gonna write it um, with an inequality, which we looked at inequalities when we did, um, when we did um, inequalities on the number line. We just did them with X, but we're gonna look at inequalities both with our X values and with our Y values, okay? So I'm gonna use a couple of your vocabulary terms today. So we're gonna look at several different things, okay? All right, so they want us to find the domain and range of each of these graphs here. So we're going to look at this one first. Make sure you're with me, Josh. Okay, so here, if you look at this graph, this has individual points. So for me to go from this point to this point to this point to this point, I have to pick up my pencil every single time, right? Okay, so this graph is what I call a discrete graph. Okay, that is one of your vocabulary terms that you had to write. If I have to pick up my pencil to go from point to point to point, it is discrete data, okay? As opposed to this graph right here, where I can draw my line and stay on there, it is called a continuous graph. Do y'all see the difference between discrete and continuous? Where I can start here, and I can stay on that line and continue until I get to the end. Everybody okay with that? All right. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about the domain. One of your vocabulary terms is domain. And we wrote up at the top up here, it says your X values will be referred to as the domain or your independent variable. Oops, y'all can't see that. Domain or your independent. Remember, independent, those are your parents. They can live without you. They are your input. 
If you change the independent, it will then do something to your dependent, right? Everybody okay with that? All right, so the domain is my X. You always read your domain from left to right. Okay, that's domain. Domain is from left to right. Okay, it does not matter what the graph looks like. Okay, it could be U-shaped. It could be like this. Okay, it could be U-shaped like this. I'm looking at it from left to right. The shape of the graph does not matter. Okay, you have to look at it from left to to right, okay? All right, so here, because my, gr my graph has a discrete data, I have to list my domain as individual X values. Here, we'll write it differently, okay? We'll write it as an inequality, but here, I've got to list my individual X values, okay? So, where does, if I look from left to right, what is the first X point that you see on this graph? I'm looking at X's. So, where is my first X point that you see? Negative three. Negative three. And from left to right, what's the next one that you see? Negative one. Negative one. Keep going. Positive one. Before that. Zero. One. And then three. Is everybody okay with that? Yes, sir. All right. Now we're going to look at the range. Range, you read from bottom to top. And you have to look at it that way. So you start at the very bottom of your graph. So think about this. Come back up here and look at this. If my graph looks like this, then I start at the very bottom of my graph. And I go from the top. If my graph looks like this, now this one happens to have an arrow on it, so this one would go on forever. Y'all remember when we had, um, when we did our inequalities and it went from negative infinity to positive infinity? This, this kind of goes on my range. It would go from negative infinity to positive infinity because it would continue going up forever. Does that make sense? Yes, yes? okay. But this has a bottom, right? So it bottoms out somewhere, whatever this would be on the number line, right? And if these had arrows going up, it would go to positive infinity. Does that make sense? If it has points right here, ends, then it ends at wherever the top of the graph is. Does that make sense? So you, can, you can't get hung up on what the graph looks, at, at, looks like. You've got to look at, does it have a beginning and end? This has a bottom, right? Where's the bottom of this graph right here? It's bottoms at one, and it has arrows that go on and on forever, right? So it would go from, the, the Y's would be from one to positive infinity. Does that make sense? Yes? And its X values would be from negative infinity because it goes on and on forever to the left, and, in, and to the right, it goes to positive infinity. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay, so that's what you have to understand is on the X axis, you're reading from left to right for your X values and for your Y values, you're reading it from the bottom to the top. Is everybody okay with that? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, you need to make sure we understand that. Okay, so let's look at our range for here. So remember, we're going down to the bottom and you're going all the way down here and we're gonna see where we see our first point. So where's the first point you see? Uh, where's the first? Go all the way down to the bottom. Tell me where you see the first point. No. Bottom to the top. Where's the first time you cross a point? Start your pencil at the bottom of your graph and work your way up until you are pointing at a point. No, sir. No, sir. Y axis. Okay, everybody look at my screen. 
No, look at my screen. Is everybody looking at the screen? Here I am, I'm going up. I'm at negative three, negative two, negative one. Now I'm at y equals zero. Do y'all not see two points at y equals zero? Right there. Yes or no? On the y-axis, do y'all not see that? So your y value is zero. That's the first time you see points from the bottom to the top. Yes or no? So your first y value is zero. What is the next place you see a point? Two. Then what? Three. Thank you. Those are your Y values. Guys, you've got to know the difference between X and Y. Bottom to the top. Do we understand how to read that or no? Like, you've got to know what you're looking for. X is left to right. Y is from the bottom to the top. You have to read it that way. Is everybody okay with that? All right. So let's look at the next one. Is this discrete or is it continuous? Tommy, it is discrete. Why is it discrete? Right, you have to pick up your pencil from point to point. I can't just draw my line. Everybody okay with that? This one is continuous. This one is discrete. This one is discrete. Is everybody okay with that? Those are vocabulary terms that you need to know. All right, those are terms that you're writing. I don't know if they're in your first 13 or in your 14 through 31, but they are vocabulary terms that you are writing. The discrete is? Okay. All right. So if I'm looking at my domain, if you know it's discrete, that means you're going to write individual numbers. If it's continuous, we're going to write it a different way. So this one, we're writing individual numbers. So if I start at the left of my graph, my first x value that I get to is what? Negative two. Okay. Then what? Okay. Mm-hmm. And... Okay, got them. All right, now my range. Range is my y value. No, range is my y values. So I go down to the very bottom of my graph. Where's the first one you see? Negative two. Okay. Then. Okay. Okay. And okay. These, the domain and the range, happen to be the same. Will it always be that way? No, it wasn't on this graph. That's okay. Sometimes they're the same. Sometimes they're not. It just happens to be that way. Is everybody okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. Let's look at this one. Yes. This one looks different. This is a continuous graph. I can start here and it goes here. Is everybody okay with that? Yes, Remember, you can't, it doesn't matter what the graph looks like. Okay? What matters is we're looking at X values from left to right. Okay, now, this, the X scale and the Y scale is different. I happen to know that because I'm looking at it. If you look at this, your X scale is 1, 2, 3, 4. Your Y scale goes by 2s, 2, 4, 6, 8, which means this is negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. Okay, everybody okay with that? Yes or no? All right, so when I'm looking at my domain, this is going to, we're going to write this differently. Where is the, where is the, you're, if we go all the way to the left on this graph, where is the, where, where does this graph begin? Where does your first X value, where do you see it? Negative eight. This X axis is going by ones. Okay, negative one. Negative one, okay. Now go all, now go to the right. It's continuous. So if I follow this graph over and it ends right here, where am I at on the X axis? Where am I located? Three. At positive three. So I end at three. I left space there for a reason. Okay, I've got to turn my camera a little bit because I'm going over here to my board. Okay. All right, so I'm going to be on my board over here for just a second. I'm up here. All right, so you remember when we did inequalities, okay? So you remember when we had an inequality and we had a number line like this and we did a graph that begins at 
negative one and it's included and it ends at three and it's included and it looks something like this, right? Y'all remember doing compounds? Remember that? And our values, because that's basically what we have, right? Yeah, my graph looks like this. That's what it looks like, right? But really, it looks like this. It begins at negative one and it ends at three, right? So it's all values of X between negative one and positive three. That's what we have, correct? Okay, so I have negative one and I have three and I have an X in the middle, right? So how do I write an inequality that goes in there? What did we do there? So X is greater than or equal to, because this is cream field, right? And here, three is going to be greater than or equal to, because it's cream field, right? Now, if these were open circles, if this was open at the end, then I would have to take that equal to off, right? So it depends on what this looks like, right? Now, if you had a graph that had arrows on the end, then it would be all real numbers or negative infinity to positive infinity, right? Because it would keep going. But it doesn't keep going. It has endpoints. Does that make sense? So it depends on what your graph is doing. But this has specific ends. So it begins here and it ends here from left to right. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Sebastian, are you good? Joshua, are you good? Do you understand what we're talking about here? Okay, so do y'all clearly see that it begins on the left side at negative 1 and it ends on the right side at positive 3? It doesn't matter what it's doing in the middle. It has a beginning at negative 1 and it has an end at positive 3. Is everybody clear on that? Does that make sense to everybody? Does it help you to see that on this number line right here? Yes. yes. Okay. All right, so that's, that takes care of that part right there. Let me get that back over here. Okay. So now, so that means we can write that inequality just like that on our paper. X in the middle, left center equal to three. Everybody okay with that inequality for our X values? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, for our range. Now, range is not X values. Range is what? The y values. Okay, so remember I told you the scale on our y, and I don't like it when they give you a different scale for x and y, but sometimes they do that. Okay, so you really have to watch the graphs, okay, and make sure, all right? Okay, so on this one, I gave you the scale over here. This they labeled up here. They just didn't down here. So I, that's why I gave it to you. All right, so let's look from the bottom to the top. Where is the bottom of my graph? It's at negative eight. Where is the top of my graph? It's at positive eight. Okay, and I have what in the middle? Not x. Y. Y. Okay, and remember my ends are cream filled, right? Okay, so what symbol goes in here? It's going to look just like this one. It's going to be west center equal to and left center equal to. So I'm going to turn my camera in just a second and I'm going to show you kind of the same thing on an up and down number line. Okay? So let's look at it over here real quick. Okay? So I drew a number line that looks like this. So, which I don't, it's a little bit different, but I mean, this is basically a y axis, right? Okay, so my graph. Here's the top of it at positive 8, and here's the bottom of it at negative 8. Yeah, it's shaped like that, right? That's what it's shaped like, but it really goes from here to here, right? So it goes from negative 8 to a positive 8, and it includes everything in between, right? So here's basically Y, right? And Y is like this, because i got to turn it sideways, right? And then it's like that. So we just flip it sideways. Does that make sense to everybody? It doesn't matter that it makes this curvy. It doesn't matter what it does all in between. I've got to look at here's where it begins and here is where it ends. Okay, it starts here and it ends here. Okay, it starts down here and it ends up here. Everything it does in the middle 
does not matter unless it has like something weird, but it doesn't. It starts, it does curvy stuff, whatever, doesn't matter. I'm looking at the bottom of the graph to the top of the graph. Is everybody okay with that? Does that make sense to everyone? Yes. Does this help? Yes. Okay. All right, so does we understand how to write that inequality there? Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, now look at your next graph. It's kind of wonky, isn't it? What does it do? Just in your own words, what does it do? Yeah, it starts and then it has a spot that's not included, and then it goes again and it has another spot that's not included, and then it goes and then it ends on a spot that is included, right? And that's pretty much what it does? Okay, so basically what's going to happen here is we have to write three separate inequalities for the domain and the range. Because it, end, it starts and it ends, and then it starts and it ends, and then it starts and it ends. Does that make sense to everybody? You're not going anywhere. Okay, what? So would that be like one through six except for three and five? Kind of. Kind of, that's pretty much what we're going to say. For the range, that's pretty much what we're going to say. But we have to write it as an inequality. Did y'all hear what he said? I mean, that's pretty much exactly what we're going to say. We just have to write it as an inequality. Yeah, but it'd be different for the y. Oh. Yeah, yeah, the domain will be a little bit different. Yeah. But that's for the, for the range. That's pretty much what we're going to say. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do the domain first. But we've got to write it as three separate inequalities. Okay, so the first one, so let's do the first part of the domain. Where does it start on the left side? Where does your domain, Tommy? It begins at one. Is that number included? Yes. Okay, so it's gonna be, what symbol do we use? Less than or equal to, and then I always use what letter for domain? X. X, okay. And then here, what symbol am I gonna use before my next number? No, it's not going to be equal to. So it's just going to be, why is it not going to be equal to, Kaylee? Because it's not current field. Okay, so then it's just going to be less than, and what number now? Two. Two is my next number. You see it? Look. Look at my screen. Our next number is two. Because remember, we're going from left to right. So our next number is two. Is everybody okay with that? All right, so then we have to start at two. So you're going to go to your next piece. So the next piece starts at two. Okay, now two is what than x? Less, less, not just less than. Less, less than x, and then our next part is at what number? Four. 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 But what symbol do I use before that? Less than just less than four. Okay, so that's the middle piece. Now then the next piece we have to start at four. So four is... What symbol? Less than x. And now I can do what? Less than or equal to 6. Very good. Is everybody okay with the domain? With how we did that? I don't think you would ever get one this complicated. Like I've never seen one on a test this complicated. But if you can write this one, then you can write any other. Does that make sense? Alright, so now let's look at the range. We're going to do the same thing for the range. We're just going from the bottom to the top. Josh pretty much gave it to you already. We just have to write it in three separate ones. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, so we're starting at the bottom. We start where, Josh? What'd you say? One. At one. And is it included? Yes. yes. So we're using what symbol? Less than or equal to. Less than or equal to. And we're not using X. We're using what? Y. 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 And we're going up to what number? Less than three. 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 Oops, I forgot my symbol. Sorry. Less than three. Good. Jonathan told me the number. Less than three. Okay, then we have to start at... 3 is less than y is less than what? Less than 5. Then my next one starts at what? 5. Okay, so 5 is what? Less than y is what? Less than or equal to 6. So basically, you read that just like what Josh said. For the domain, it's basically numbers between what? 1 and 6 except for 2 and 4, right? For the range, it's numbers between 1 and 6 except for 3 and 5. 
And they might would give you that in work, like in a sentence. You see what I'm saying? And if they gave it to you, it's actually easier to read in a sentence. But if they gave it to you as an inequality, you need to know that that's what you're writing. Does that make sense? Because I don't know how they're going to give it to you. But you need to be able to read it either way. Is that logical? Does everybody understand how to write the inequality? Okay, does everybody understand like what you're looking at here? You're looking at the bottom to the top or the bottom to the top. But it doesn't matter. Like here, you're looking at left to right, but here you're looking at bottom to top. You really have to understand what you're looking at. The bottom to the top for the Y and the left to the right for the X. Is everybody okay with that? You start at zero with each one and go across, right? Say that again? Uh, since like why you're going up for each one you're starting at zero and then well it depends on where the graph starts I mean it kind of it just depends on you find the bottom wherever the bottom of your graph is wherever that net wherever that bottom of the graph is because it could be at negative three or it could be at zero it could be at five depends on where your graph is Does that make sense like because this one the bottom was at one does that make sense but it could be, you know, here the bottom was at one, two, three, negative four, or negative was negative eight in this graph. Does that make sense? So it just depends on where the where it bottoms out. Does that did that answer your question or not? Answer. Okay. Is everybody good? You just have to look. If this had a point on, if this didn't have an arrow on this, then this one would actually bottom out at zero. Everybody okay? So you've just got to look at where your graph actually has a bottom. Where it's sitting. Everybody okay with that? Continuous, right? Yeah. What? This oh, one? Yeah. yeah, this is continuous. All right, let's look at this problem right here. All right, the function. Everybody's comfortable with that word function, right? Yes, sir. Okay, the function y equals 7x plus 35 represents the monthly cost y in dollars of a group of x members joining the fitness club. They want us to first, we're gonna identify the independent and the dependent variables. All right, which one is my independent? Huh? What? Right, but who, but in this, this is a real world problem. So what is my independent and what is my dependent? So what would be my independent in this problem? X my X value, so what would be represented by my X value in this problem? The members, good. That's my members. X, so what is my dependent then? Wow. Which is what? What does that represent me in this problem? The cost. The cost, good. So my, whoops. my cost is my Y. Okay, so answer me this. With this problem, if I'm looking at a graph of this, would this represent a discrete situation or a continuous situation? Think about what we're talking about. It was the, I thought it would be a screen. Tell me why. Because what? It can't be like the money is. The numbers aren't exactly related. They aren't the same thing. Well, sort of. What are you saying? Like, Think about what the problem is about. You can only pay like a certain amount. You can't pay in between them, right? Kind of. Okay, look at what each thing represents. Okay, because you, you can have money can be what? It can be what? Okay, think about what your two things are. Look at your two variables. One of them is what? Say, Tony. Okay, what is your independent variable? Members. What are members? People. people. What do you know about people? You can't have half a person. Which means it must be a whole number, right? Which means when I put that on a graph, it can't be in between the line, right? It must be a whole number. It can't be an integer. It can't be a fraction. It can't be a decimal. Must be a whole number, which means I'm not going to be able to draw in between the line. I'm going to have to pick my pencil up, right? So this represents discrete data okay because that's the thing is when we get into real world type problems this is when we this is where you recognize discrete and now 
when we graphed it, would your would you would your calculator graph it as a straight line? Yes. Yes. But could your answer be in between? No, this is where you have to recognize that it really can't be a partial anything. It has to be a whole number because your your calculator can't distinguish between a can't distinguish between discrete and whole and continuous. You have to distinguish between. Does that make sense? Your calculator doesn't know that you got to pick your pencil up. You have to know. Does that make sense? Like you have to know. Can it be in between there? You have to be aware of that. Does that make sense? Did you understand that? Yes. You have to understand that because your calculator is not going to pick it up and only put the whole numbers in there and only put the, the positive whole numbers. Okay? Everybody okay with that? Yes. Like you have to be aware of what the problem is about. You have to think about that. Okay? Because if you graph it in a calculator, your calculator is going to graph a straight line. And you're going to look at it and be like, oh, it's continuous. It's a straight line. Well, of course, because your calculator is going to graph y equals 7x plus 35. It's just going to graph the line. You have to understand that what it what the possibilities are limited to. Does that make sense to y'all? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's talk about, because they want us to, um, it says your group has enough money for up to six members. All right, and they want us to identify the domain and the range. Okay, so let's talk about the domain and our range for a second. So let's, so if we already identified that it's gonna be discrete, right? So am I gonna have an inequality for my domain and my range? No, I'm having individual values, right? Okay, what is my first possible domain number? What's the minimum number of members that I could? Huh? Do, do I have to have members? Do they have to? Zero is my first possible choice, right? Yeah, okay, eight, so zero, 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 then what? Zero, then, <coughs> then one, then two, two, two then three, four, then five, then six. Okay, can I do any more than that? No. Because it said what? Up to six. Up to six. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. All right. Now, how do I find the range? How do you go about finding the range? Track where y goes. If you what? You know, graph it. Do you have to graph it? What does the domain represent? X. X. So how can I find y if I know x? It's the same thing. It's just you know, in a straight line. So you zero, okay, you're gonna plug it in. You're gonna plug it in. Thank you, Kaylee. So find me. It find me my y values. So what is my range if the domain is at is zero? No. Thirty-five. Thank you. 36, 37. No, not thirty-six, thirty-seven. The first one, yes, I agree, is thirty-five. 35. What's the second one? If your domain is one, what is your range? Thank you, Kaylee. What is it? Y'all have calculators. If your domain is one, what is your range? This isn't difficult math. Thirty-five. Thank you. How'd you get it, Kaylee? Since the rest of the class doesn't know what to do. Uh, seven times one plus thirty-five. Thank you. Seven times one is seven plus thirty-five. Gave her forty-two. Sebastian, do find me number two. Josh, find me three. Taylor, find me four. Carla, find me five. Tommy, find me six. You said four. Whatever I told you. Who had three? Okay. 56. Uh, yeah, who had two? 
Sebastian had two, and he hasn't gotten it yet. Tommy, uh, Josh had 56. Okay. We're still waiting on this one from Sebastian. Who had four? Taylor? 63. Okay. Who had five? Thank you. Who had six? Thank you. Sebastian? Thank you. Okay. Everybody okay with that? All you got to do is plug in your number for X. It's simply plugging in your X value to get your Y value. Everybody okay with that? Yes, sir. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to this tomorrow because I'm going to let you work on your assignment today from, from Thursday. Everybody okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Are we going to be able to finish the assignment? You should be able to finish it. My other class did. Okay.